Well, I was a very confused young man about life in itself. My dad wasn't a Christian man. My mom was a Christian, so I'm dealing with a secular and a spiritual home trying to merge into one. And unfortunately, my dad divorced my mom, leaving us in Compton with seven children. And as a result of that, I felt the obligation to protect my five beautiful sisters. And I had a baby brother at that time who was eight years old. And I didn't want my mom's Jesus because at that time my mom's Jesus seemed very dogmatic and domineering and very judgmental. I didn't understand the Word of God like I do today as I grew and matured and developed. So I strayed away from life. I was, went into a counterculture lifestyle to drug addiction, gang activity, and just a criminal lifestyle. Until one day I took an overdose of drugs, PCP. I wasn't looking for God, but certainly He was looking for me because I heard his voice speak to me when I took that overdose of PCP out at a party one Saturday night. I heard the voice speak to my mind, said, accept me tonight and live or reject me tonight and die. I knew it was the voice of Jesus because I felt him speak in my spirit, not an audible voice like I'm talking to you, but a voice that only your owner, your creator could get your attention with. So when I said, yes, Lord, the Lord brought me down sober. I accepted Jesus Christ. I struggled some after that. But I made my way back, you know, and my mom raised me uh, as a Christian, but I strayed away from it. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he gets older, he will not depart. As I learned more about Jesus, I came back to the Lord. You know what I found out? It's not that young people don't like Jesus. Sometimes they just don't like the way we package Jesus. And through uh, a myriad of experiences, and I fell in love with Jesus Christ. And as today, I'm here, married 31 years to my beautiful wife, LaVette, and we don't have any children, but God is using this platform and enlarging our territory so we can impact the world through preachers of LA with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm excited. You know, I wouldn't suggest that everyone who watches the show try to do what I do. Uh, there's a scripture in the book of Ezekiel. It says, I sat where they sat. You can never really understand the person. The proverb says, the aphorism says, until you walk a mile in their shoes. I grew up in South Central LA in the projects, moved to Compton, got involved in gang activity. So I understand the plight, the experience, and the lifestyle of the men that you see me in the show uh, talking to. And maybe they don't know me personally, but I know their lifestyle, I know their their jargon, their, their lingo, their, their plight, their pitiful plight that is. They're really crying out for the Lord. They're looking for Jesus, but they're looking for love in all the wrong places. And I found the Messiah, like, like Peter told his brothers and sisters. They found Jesus, and that's all I'm doing. Jesus told Peter, after you're strengthened, after you're converted, go back and strengthen your brethren. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So it's not Ron Gibson, it's the God in me reaching out to the God in them through unconditional love.